Hello everyone and welcome to our fifth video from the assessment playbook study where we are going to share some highlights with you from the topics we covered in March. We want to thank everyone that was able to join us for our March synchronous meeting and we hope you were able to take away some inspiration and ideas from that session. If you were unable to join us for that March synchronous meeting, please know that the recorded version is linked in the Google Classroom under general resources in your assessment playbook study plan. During the month of March, we have been learning about enduring processes known as assessment playlists in the distance and blended learning environment, as well as ways to make decisions about assessments in any setting. So for today's video, the success criteria we have is number one, that you can make connections from what you read or to what you have heard in previous synchronous sessions to our provided topics from the second month's topics. And our six, second success criterion is that you can apply your learning from this topic study back in your school or district to positively impact student achievement. So let's take a look at that first success criterion and making some connections. So moving on, as stated earlier, chapter two really focused on those enduring processes called assessment playlists that help us to intentionally match an assessment type to our intended purpose. They're called playlists because just like a song playlist, we often select songs that suit or match our mood. When we're happy, we choose upbeat songs. When we are melancholy or down, we often select slower tempo songs. And the text suggests we should use a similar mentality for assessments. So matching the assessment type to our intended purpose by selecting from a playlist of options. Assessment playlist one, assessment through universal response. So assessment through universal response is an efficient way for teachers to elicit evidence of student learning all at once. It allows the teacher opportunities to receive immediate feedback from students simultaneously in order to monitor student understanding and gauge misconceptions, which move the learning forward. Universal responses are important because they provide feedback to teachers in real time and function like micro assessments that prompt learners to consider their own knowledge in the moment. Waterfall chats, hand signals, response cards, emoji meters, and polling are just a few examples of universal responses. Universal responses are a great way to strengthen our ability to retrieve information from memory because the clearer the path, the easier and quicker it is to locate information. In other words, the more often we need to find that information, the more permanent the information becomes in our brains. So universal responses can allow that repeated practice in finding information to help strengthen our retrieval skills. We know that research affirms that three to 10 seconds is needed for wait time and even longer for EL students. However, we know that the typical classroom only allows for on average one to two seconds. In the virtual environment, the need to cognitively process, the audio signal delay, and the actions required to respond are an indication of the need for increased wait time, not more teacher talk. So universal responses can quicken the pace of learning through increased opportunities to answer questions. Playlist 2 looks at the assessment tool of TeachBack, and TeachBack provides students with opportunities to construct their knowledge by teaching something they are learning to someone else. And when we look at the reasons that this is an important assessment tool, one, we know that it helps students to solidify their knowledge and organize their thinking around a specific topic. It also helps them to clarify their own thinking about that topic to determine what they know and understand and areas where they may still be confused. So it actually forms as, some, uh, as a type of self-assessment. In addition, it provides the teacher with insights into students' cognitive and metacognitive thinking by making their thinking visible for the teacher to better assess their level of understanding. In addition, it assists with transfer or ownership of the learning, and we know that one of the best ways to demonstrate true understanding of something is being able to teach it to someone else. It helps to move the learning from short term to long term memory and to then transfer that learning to new situations. And one of the recommendations the text gave when using TeachBack as an assessment tool is to ensure from the beginning students know who their intended audience is and the way that the TeachBack will be assessed. 
The text offered great examples of how we could use TeachBack as an assessment tool in any setting. With class TeachBack, that's where the intended audience would be their peers. And then with TeachBack to the family, they can extend that audience to teach something to a family member. With retelling, they're simply recording themselves, putting something into their own words from maybe a lesson or a uh, text that they've read or a video that they've watched. Student created podcasts, again, that really widens the audience of who they're able to teach to as they create, produce, and present some information. And written summaries just allow students to articulate their thinking in words in a short, concise way, something like Twitter notes. And then finally, um, students can create recordings of themselves responding to the three clarity questions of what am I learning, why am I learning it, and how do I know that I've learned it? Playlist three is assessment through composing. And this assessment tool lends itself to measuring student progress where teachers have a written product from the student that they can use to analyze and assess student understanding. And one of the reasons this is an important assessment tool is that through the process of putting their thoughts into writing, it makes it easy for teachers to assess what students know and what they don't know. As teachers analyze their students writing, they can then look for individual areas or trends across the class that better enables the teacher to differentiate instruction based on student needs. And then composing as an assessment tool, it's so powerful because it goes across all content areas and the structure of the writing can vary depending upon the purpose. So anything from like a lab report in science to mathematical explanations for solving a problem to literary analysis. In the text, again, we saw several examples of how we can assess through composing. Interactive notebooks allow students to kind of reflect on their thinking over time and function much like physical notebooks in the face-to-face -face setting. With generative sentences, this is where we give students a key term and then we give them some parameters for using that term in a sentence to assess their understanding of our key academic vocabulary. Written summaries you will notice are on playlist two and three because it has students articulating their thinking in writing for us to assess their level of understanding. The one pager is a creative way for students to summarize their thinking around a topic in one page using text and images to convey their understanding. And anytime we have students doing annotations of a text in some form, we can always take those annotations to assess their level of understanding. Like could they underline and identify the, uh, the key ideas within the text? Were they able to make connections to other things or other texts that they have read? And then finally, the five word summary is just a way to assess if students really get the big ideas out of a lesson or a particular text. It allows them to work individually as well as with small groups of other students as they reach consensus on the five most important words that capture the big ideas. And then students individually use those five words to draft a summary um, of their learning. And so assessment alignment playlist four is all about self and peer assessment. The purpose of self and peer assessment is to help students manage their own learning. Students who manage their own learning are able to set goals, make plans, monitor their progress, and adapt their approaches to learning. We know that for self and peer assessment to be successful, students need to see effective teacher modeling and have ample time to practice what they see modeled as well. Self-assessment is a habit that can serve students well across their lifespan. It's important because it helps students make decisions about their own learning and assist students in accurately articulating their own strengths. Peer assessment is important because it deepens students' understanding of the content and its quality and enhances the feedback loop. Both peer and self-assessment provide feedback to self-monitor if students are on the right track or not. The key to both is ensuring that we clearly communicate clarity around success for both self and peer assessment. And so a few examples of self and peer feedback tools include no show charts, single point rubrics, color coded feedback, peer response to writing and peer assisted reflection. These examples are helpful because they allow students to view their own work and the work of their peers critically and use it to make decisions about how to proceed in their learning. These tools work to really enhance students' ability to self or peer assess. And then finally, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or to Misty 
Um, thank, we appreciate you taking time out of your day today to watch this wrap up of section two on assessment playlists.